assistant. So this candidate or this person was also a student assistant and she placed it there. So is any, um, are any of her work experiences office, if um, you're from the College of Computer Studies, if you're taking a technical course, you can definitely place the programs that you're an expert in, the programming languages that you're an expert in, the, some of the certifications that you've gained, these will be helpful. How long is the resume? How long is that resume? A single page. Is it concise? Yes. Is it clear? Yes. Is it customized for the marketing position she's applying for? Yes. Does she have her shoe size on it? No. Her photo on it? No. I think we're good. So you have an idea. I'm going to move on and I'm going to show you the resume of somebody with experience. And this is really a friend of mine. So this is an actual resume from, from a friend of mine. This is a person who has about 10 years or more of uh, work experience already. So he handed me this resume when he was applying for the training manager, uh, the learning and development manager position at uh, one of my previous employers. So take a good look at that. How long is that resume? This is coming from an experienced person. A single page. A single page, all right? So the name is there. The address is there. He places complete address. That's fine. But what is, uh, let me read this. What's uh, the first statement there? Can you read? No, it's, it's, he said life mission. He did not place an objective. He did not place a profile, but he placed a life mission. Remember, he is applying for a training or a learning and development or training manager position. And he placed, my mission is to teach and develop, helping people achieve success in the most uh, uh, endeavor. The most compelling lecture is one that is lived and spoken. Interesting. Smart, right? Not an objective, not a profile, but a life mission. You can do that as well. But he can do this because he has years of experience uh, already, okay? Experience, SPI Global, Senior Training Manager, SPI Global, Ilo Site, Jollibee Food Corporation, uh, and then Education, Bachelor of Laws, um, Certification, Lean Six Sigma, Enterprise Quality Professional. This came from a person with years of experience. Remember, the resume is merely a snapshot of your profile. So even if he's backed by 10, 15 years of experience, he just placed his employers there. Why do you think he did not place a very detailed uh, description of his experiences? Why? Because this will be asked during the interview. So with some, come, for, for someone with about 15 years of experience, he can simply place the basic information of his work experience and work history, but it's substantial already because his position was already on the managerial level. But this gives you an idea of what a re an ideal resume should look like. Is this resume clear? Yes. Is this resume concise? Yes. And is this resume customized to the position he was seeking then? Yes. And this is coming from an experienced person. By the way, when you place your work history, um, there are different orders to, uh, uh, to follow when you place your different employers. You can place uh, your most recent employer, ideally your most recent employer, and then the oldest or the earliest. Or, it, remember, it's customized. If you're applying for a specific position and you have uh, a couple of years back you had this experience, you can place that first. So whatever is relevant, that's what you highlight. Okay? Whatever is relevant, that's what you highlight on the resume. We're good? So the resume in short, and this is to wrap things up for the resume, it's a marketing document and not a historical document. It is a mere snapshot of your profile. It should not tell the whole story. Leave the rest during the interview, for the interview. And it should be clear, concise, customized if necessary. We're good? Let's talk about... Uh, the interview. So if the resume, uh, can we go back to the previous slide? All right, thank you. If the resume is your profile, the interview is your pitch. So let's say you've already submitted a great resume and they invited you over for an interview. All right, so you come to the interview, how do you ace your interview? And this will be very quick. And by the way, uh, speaking of the resume, before I forget, nowadays people submit the resume online, right? We have online job boards, we have employers have e um, 
recruitment portals where you can upload or submit the resume. In case you want to send your resume via email, please make sure to place a body on the resume, on, on the email. I have received countless resumes where they merely place the document as an attachment and the email itself is empty. There were cases when there's not even a subject on the email. Or sometimes they would place a subject, job application, empty email, just the attachment. Please, you're not, if you don't want to do a cover letter thing, that's fine. But please place something on the body of your email. Like, hi, I'm applying for this position. Please see attachment. You know, try to be professional about it. Okay, but anyway, let's talk about the interview, which is your pitch. So the interview should, this is what the interview shouldn't be, okay? So the interview is not an interrogation. So it's not you sitting on a chair on a, in a dark room or cell with uh, a light swinging, uh, you know, <laughs> above you. That's not it. So a job interview is, a job application is not a petition. You are not begging and you're not being interrogated during the interview. That means... You should not look like lambs to the slaughter when you come in for an interview. You should not be cowering in fear, coming like a beggar. Right? You're a merchant candidate and you come with confidence. So it's not an interrogation. It's not a Q&A portion. You get me? The job interview is not a Q&A portion. So you don't start your answer with, I believe, don't, okay? And the third is, it is not a petition. So you're not there to beg for the job. You're there as a merchant candidate with something to offer. So you come with confidence, with strategy, with persistence. So the interview is about you making your pitch. And normally during the interview, these things are discussed. Number one, what is that? Experience. Now we've already discussed that even as a fresh graduate, you have something to offer. But just in case you really don't have anything there, just in case, then you can merely place your education and your skills. That is fine. You don't want to make up anything, all right, on your resume. But if you have something there, any work experience, OJT, internship, uh, projects you've done at school, that's experience. Group projects you've done at school, that's experience. So you can add, uh, and definitely these things will be asked during the interview. Okay, um, let's move ahead. We also ask about the educational background, definitely. So I think that is a given. We ask about your endeavors. We ask about your goals. We ask about your plan in the next two to three years. One of the questions I would ask normally is, what are your short-term plans? What are your long-term plans? We ask this question, or these questions, to determine whether the candidate is going to stay long with us whether the candidate is really going to grow with the company or leave us after six months. What if you plan to go outside the country in six months time? And we ask you, what's your short-term plan? Um, well, my plan is to uh, get a job in Saudi Arabia within a year's time, but I think I'm applying for this job for training and as a stepping, you know, they would use that word always as, you know, a springboard or like a stepping stone or stepping block for, What's ahead? Do you think we would hire the person who would give us that kind of response? So you're applying for a position in, the, in our organization simply because you, you want to gain, you want to be trained. And after we train you and you get whatever experience you're seeking, goodbye. Hello job, goodbye. You know, that's not the kind of job that, uh, that's not the kind of candidate we're seeking. And th the fourth one is expectations. This is where we start asking about, uh, what's this, your expected work schedule. We ask about your expected hours. We ask about your expected salary. We ask about your expected length of stay. So if a job interview is not an interrogation, it's not a Q&A portion, what is a job interview? A job interview really is a conversation. It's a professional conversation between the potential employer and the potential employee. So it is a two-way street. Let me say that again. A job interview is a two-way street. What does that mean? That means it's a conversation between two individuals. It's not one person 
asking questions and one person merely just responding. You can ask questions in a job interview. Did you know that? In fact, employers want candidates who ask questions because it shows that you're proactive and that you are interested in the job. So a job interview is not an interrogation, but a professional conversation. And we will ask experience, we'll ask about your experience, education, endeavors, and definitely your expectations. Just really quickly, let me run you through uh, a basic interview. So let's say you sit down, on the, uh, let's say we ask you to come over, we invite you inside the room and you take your seat. The first question we would normally ask is this. Would you know what the first question is? It's basic. It's the most basic question of all. What was that? Can you share something about yourself? It sounds basic, but the purpose of the interview, it's a conversation, right? We want to get to know you better. You want to get to know your potential employer better, but we want to get to know you as our potential employee better. So we start with the basics. Uh, can you share something about yourself? Tell us something about yourself. How do you respond to that question? From my experience, the classic response would really be this, and don't follow this, please. What? My name is, correct, you can read my mind. My name is, I am, the, she mentioned, he or she would mention the age. Um, I am a simple person, and this is, I, I get, the, I would receive this a lot before. I'm a simple person with varied interests. It's such a classic response. Okay, but please don't uh, do that, okay? You don't need to mention your name anymore because it's on the resume. Obviously, you're Juan de la Cruz. So when we ask you to tell something about yourself, how do you attack this question? You respond by sharing something interesting about yourself. Interesting but not incriminating, okay? Interesting, uh, for example, you can talk about your hobbies here, okay? You can talk about your hobbies, you can talk about your experience if you want, but we will ask about it as well, okay? For example, you have, uh, you love dogs, or you love pets, and you have seven dogs at home, and different breeds, wow, all right? You can, you can share something about this because it gives you personality. So you can talk about this during your interview, but of course, don't dwell on it, but you can mention that because it gives you personality, okay? But you don't need to mention what's on the resume, the basics at least, such as your name or your, if you want to place your age or your age, you don't need to mention these things, okay? So share something interesting. And then we would ask about educational background. We would validate. Did you know that even if you place all of your educational history there, most likely recruiters would still ask. Example, you're a graduate of 2019. We would ask you still, so when did you graduate? When did you earn the degree? Why would we ask? Just to validate. We want to hear it from, straight from the horse's mouth, so to speak. Even if we know it's already there. So when did you graduate? What was your course? What was your major in college? We've already, we see it, but we will ask you because we want you to validate there. For example, you graduated 2015, and you can't remember the date of your graduation or the year of graduation when we interview you. That, can, that speaks something about your memory, right? So we ask and we validate. Then we ask about experience. So please, normally, my style of interview is, and it differs from recruiter to recruiter, I would let the candidate do most of the talking. So please, walk me through your work history. And then they get to talk. Tell me about your work experience. And then if I have follow-up questions, I ask. But I let them walk me through their work experience. So tell, if I'm interviewing a fresh graduate, I would ask, so tell me about your experience in school. What was it like? And then we would ask behavioral questions normally. Behavioral questions, we frame the questions in a way that you get to do the talking, in a way that you tell a story. Example, uh, we would ask situational questions. Like, so tell me about a time when you did the group activity at school uh, and it was very challenging. Uh, what was it about? And uh, uh, was there any, uh, did you encounter any challenges? And how did you overcome the challenges? That is an example of a behavioral question. You get to tell the story. We don't feed you the answers. It's not a yes or no, it's open-ended, but you get to tell the story. Right? Well, uh, there was a time when we were asked to do this group activity and we have to visit uh, this or that and we have to collate this information, 
and I worked with 10 people, and we had challenges with finances, with transportation, with beating the deadline, but this is how we did it. We did it through teamwork, and eventually we got a great grade. It's behavioral, you're very specific. So when you're responding to questions, be specific. So in a job interview, this is a tip. Veer away from the generic to the specific. Do not give generic responses. Share something specific, an actual experience, an actual steps that you took. For example, to overcome a challenge at school or in the workplace. We're good? And then let's say, so we have, we ask you the basic questions about yourself, education. We ask behavioral questions during the experience part when we ask about your experience. And then we ask about your goals and your expectations, your endeavors and your expectations. So if we ask you, for example, um, how long do you intend to stay in our organization? What's the ideal response? You know there is a classic response to that. The classic response to that question is this. Would you know? If I ask you now, so how long do you plan to stay with us? What is the classic response? Until the company needs me. That's a classic response. Is that a generic or specific response? It's generic. In fact, it's not hitting the mark at all. So uh, state something specific, an actual length of, length of time. Example, uh, I, I see myself, I intend to stay probably three to five years in this organization. It shows that you have goals. It shows that you have thought about it. Rather than saying, well, until the company needs me. Until a long time. Somebody even told me forever. <laughs> I am not joking. How long do you plan to stay with us? Forever. Wow, okay. I don't even plan to stay forever here. And you plan to stay longer than me. Good, okay. No, state something specific. That is the, that's a very important tip I can give you. Specific, specific, specific. So three to five years, it shows you have goals. It shows you've thought about it. It shows that you are a goal-oriented person. Is it true? It's irrelevant. Do you really want to stay three to five years in the organization? I hope it's true. But even if it's not, you've shared something specific. And that's already a plus point for you. All right? So we ask about endeavors, expectations. We also ask, um, where do you see yourself? That's a classic question, right? So where do you see yourself exactly in three to five years' time? If you really want to grow, mention a specific position. I plan to be a manager in the near future. I plan to be able to handle a team in the near future and not just to be an individual contributor. So you mention something specific. We also ask, this is important, um, we ask about the work hours. Uh, are you open to working on shifting schedules? It depends. Not all employers are on an eight to five uh, schedule, right? A lot of the multinational employers would require you sometimes to work on the mid-shift. Like you come in at 1 p.m., you end at 10. You come in at 3 p.m., you end at midnight. That happens. That's an actual shift. You come at 7, you leave at 4. If you work in a multinational setup where you support globally, you come at 9 p.m., you leave at 6 a.m. So we would ask questions. Uh, what, are the, what are your expected work hours? If the, per if the job that the person is applying for is really on a mid-shift, like 1 p.m. to 10 p.m., and this person says, I just want an 8 to 5 job, like an 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. job. So that alone, we would know that the person is not a fit, correct? Or a match for the position. So we would ask that. We would also ask about your favorite topic, salary. <laughs> Earlier, as mentioned, what is your expected salary? We would ask that because if your expectation is too high from what the job can offer, then it's pointless to extend the offer to you or to get you for the job, right? So we would ask that. What is your expected salary? How do you answer that question? What are your, what are your salary expectations? How do you respond to that question exactly? Would you know? I mentioned earlier specific, right? So if you have a ra specific range, now well, let's not say the amount, okay? You don't have to say 25,037 cents. You don't have to be that specific, okay? You can be very specific about the range. I'm expecting between probably 15 to 20 as a start. That's your expectation. We can't blame you for that. That's your idea, okay? You can be very specific about the range or 
if you don't really want to mention anything, you can be very honest in this area. Especially if you're a fresh graduate, you can say, I don't really have any idea for now, but maybe later when, if, I get the, if I'm lucky enough to get the job, and when you extend the offer, then I can make a decision. So you can be very honest about that question. It would be a shame if you mention something very specific and you get disqualified from the position just because you have no idea actually. But this is why it is important to ask around and to do research before you even go for a job interview. What kind of company am I applying for? What are the salary ranges in this company? What are the positions they're, see they're offering? We're God. So we ask these things. Remember, experience, education, endeavors, expectations. And the last part of the interview normally is this. You guys still with me? The last part of the interview is this. We would ask about whether the candidates have questions for us. Remember, it is a two-way street. A job interview is a two-way street. It is a professional conversation. So we would ask, do you have questions for me? Should you ask or not? Ask. Even if you know the answer, ask. Because we would always hire a proactive candidate. It's, it's plus points in a job interview, so to speak. So what kind of questions can you ask the interviewer? What kind of questions can you ask the interviewer? An example would be this, okay? And this is a tip already. You can ask, so what is the next step right after this uh, interview? When should I be hearing from you again? Can I get any feedback? Right? Or if you want to be very pushy and confident, how much is this job going to... <laughs> how much is this job paying? You can ask that question if you're very pushy, but I don't recommend that, okay? But you can if you want to be very honest and you can frame the question in a very mild and professional manner. Ask questions, that is the point, okay? Ask questions. Dur uh, during a job interview. Don't let that opportunity go because a lot of times I would ask candidates, Can, do you have any questions for me? Do you have anything for me? And don't ask the question at the video earlier, when lightning strikes the sea, don't ask that, <laughs> okay? So ask questions. Somebody uh, asked me even, so did, do I get the job or not? If you want to be very, you know, if you want to be very confident about that, then you can. Okay, we're good. So ask questions. Some basic uh, Q, uh, FAQs. How early should I arrive for an interview? An hour before the job interview? 30 minutes? Two hours? 24 hours? No. The ideal response is this. Probably 10 to 15 minutes would be great. Please take note. 10 to 15 minutes would be great. You don't want to stay too long waiting because it might give you the jitters. You know, you're waiting there for an hour and you're starting to become more nervous and nervous, right? So you can just, 15, 20, 30 minutes is safe even. But 10 to 15 minutes would be great, okay? You don't want to be there even before the office opens. Okay? What should I wear? Definitely clothes. Okay? What should I wear for a job interview? You guys are looking very dapper and professional. That is great. You all look great today, okay? You can wear these... And this is ideal, actually, corporate. But the response is this, what should, I, what should I wear in a job interview? Business casual. What I'm wearing now is business casual. Some of you are wearing suits even, great. But you, um, this is why it's important to do a little research about the, your potential employer. You have to know their work culture. Are they dressed casually? Are they strictly corporate? And then you can wear your suit and tie, right? Or are they business casual? And you can wear anything with a color, no jeans, no rubber shoes or sneakers. What I'm wearing now is business casual. For example, that's our dress code at the office. No t-shirts, no jeans, no rubber shoes and sneakers, except Fridays and holidays, okay? But definitely no shorts, no flip-flops, no matter how expensive they may be. We don't really care, okay? Business casual. So come to an interview wearing business casual. Should you dress up or dress down? You know the response already. Dress up. Here's why. Uh, if you're not sure about the work culture in, you know, your, uh, in the company you're applying for, then dress up. Why? For example, um, if you're... Sir, come over, please. Yeah, please stand. So, 
my good friend here <laughs> is wearing a suit and a tie. It's strictly corporate. A lot, a lot of the big businesses, to be very honest, um, are most of them have the business. It's not really suit and tie kind of stuff.